Okay, the new ESI USB transducer. First off, we'll click on the icon. And you see a new splash screen telling it's suitable for use with the GD4200 and the GS4200 USB. Okay, you're greeted by the monitor screen. It says there's no sensors connected. I haven't connected any yet. So we'll just connect the first sensor. And it says new device has been attached. So we'll run find sensors. Okay, so it's found one sensor. We'll have a look at the manage screen just to have a look at that sensor. It shows you the serial number. It shows you it's a fast sensor. It's one of the new GD4200s. Okay. Right, on this software, you've got various options for the pressure, as you had before. The only one we've added, we've added kilopascals. That was a new feature for this, this version of software. Pressure format, all that is is the amount of numbers after the decimal place. We'll leave it on, on, on 4. You set your temperature, centigrade Fahrenheit. Previously you could only use centigrade, but now you can have Fahrenheit as well if you so wish. As a pressure interval, at the moment it's set at 1000 Hz. But if you wanted to run one of the standard speed, the GS4200s, we'd run it at that speed. But we'll go back to full speed. And we can have a temperature interval as well. Temperature interval at the moment set for one second. Remember that it's not a temperature transducer. The temperature is only there to compensate the pressure. Okay, over here we've got a gauge or absolute as a selector. And you can also select all output or just the monitor page. Monitor page means all the changes we've just made that only appear on this page. All output means it appears on the graph, on the printout report as well. Next button down is details. This is just a calculator. It doesn't change any functions. It tells you, for instance, if I had seven sensors connected, running at 1000 hertz for one minute, they're going to use 8.19 megabytes of memory. Right, so we'll start the thing running. We'll click on the start button. As you can see, it's running. You can see it's all reacting fine, and the stop button underneath it, which is click on stop. Zero center, literally, clear zero as a sensor. It says, do you want to have it reset? Click yes, no problem. Okay. Another feature we've added into this software, you can have a delayed start time by this drop down on the start button. You can have an immediate start, as you just had clicking on the button. Or you can select a date in the future, the day, month, year, you can go years in the future if you so wish. Or you can say, I want to start in 10 minutes, or 9 minutes, or 8 minutes, or seconds, minutes, we'll go for 10 seconds. You can set the stop, manual, again, click on the stop button, or the same as with the start. You can set it to set any time in the future. Or we can say we're going to stop after minutes or seconds. What we'll do, we'll go, we'll stop after, let's go 15 seconds. And then we click OK and it will start in 10 seconds time. You can see at the bottom of the screen now, it's showing the measurement schedule to start in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it starts recording. And you can now see at the bottom of the screen as well now, it says how long it's been running for, and also that it will be stopping in 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 seconds. And it stopped recording. Okay, we'll zero that. Do you want to continue? Yes.